Hi y'all, what's going on? Good morning, happy Sunday. It's your lady Steph. So today I wanna to talk about, you know, low income housing, income based housing. And I just wanna share my view on it. And before I get started, for all those trolls, haters that comment below, your comment is gonna, your comment is gonna get deleted. It ain't gonna be on here for long. So I'm gonna be blocking, deleting, blocking, deleting. And that's pretty much it because y'all just doing this stuff just to try to bully and just make fun of people that are living in this type of housing situation. And all I want is positive feedback. I don't like the negative, like I keep saying, I don't like the negativity in the comment section and I will not allow that on this channel. I do have a video of this apartment that I live in before I put furniture in it. If you wanna see what my apartment looks like without furniture, Click the link below, watch that video. And I made a video last year about living in a low income housing versus section eight. Check out those videos. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, if you're looking for affordable housing, maybe you want the section eight voucher, you know, maybe you want veteran housing, you know, maybe you're looking for some type of affordable housing. If you're a veteran, okay, if you're an elderly person and you're looking, if you're disabled like myself, okay, if you're homeless or if you're a person that just has low income and you think you possibly may qualify for it, then watch my videos, click the link below and find out more. Yes, there are waiting lists, so you will have to wait for a while, but why not just get on the waiting list anyway? There's always like affordable apartments that are available. If you go to that website, which is affordablehousingonline.com, watch my video and I'll give you all the information about it so you can get affordable housing. And no, I'm not promoting poverty. I'm not promoting for people to live poor. I'm sharing videos about people that need this type of benefit. And if they qualify, they can get it as well. And so if you like what I say, feel free to thumbs up and we're gonna get started, all right? Hey y'all, what's up? What's going on? It's your lady Steph. Yeah, I look like a tomboy today with my hat to the back. But um, like I always say, listen to the message that I'm about to share this video and try not to worry about my appearance because I'm just trying to, you know, make a point um, with the videos that I share. Anyway, I want to talk about affordable housing. I kind of want to tell my story again, how I got this apartment. Um, a few years ago, I used to be on Section 8. When I was on Section 8. And then I couldn't find nowhere to live after a while because on Section 8 in Georgia, the landlords will just stop taking it and then you'll have to just keep moving <laughs> over and over and over again. And then after a while, you won't be able to find nothing, especially if you have a, especially if you have like a single person voucher. It's hard because the rent be real high. You know, the government don't give you enough money to cover a one- a one bedroom, a one bedroom apartment, and then it's really hard to find one bedroom apartments with Section Eight. Trust me, I've experienced it. I don't know how it is in different states, but yeah, it's very, very difficult in Georgia. In 2017, while I was on Section Eight, I went to that website, AffordableHousingOnline.com, that I keep mentioning in the videos where I talk about low income housing in Section Eight. I went to that website. I found out about the place that I live at now. That was back in 2017. Um, I found out about the place. I applied. I was on a waiting list for a long time up until like 2021. They pulled me off the waiting list and I had to submit all this documentation before I got this place. Now in 2021, I did not move in here. I had to wait my, I had to wait for a while. Um, so then in 2022, at the end of 2022, my mom was like, the, I, had got, I had got letters from the housing authority. And so they said I qualify and they have a place for me to live. So came here, went to the leasing office. They had to verify my income. They had to do all this stuff. I had to do all this stuff to see if I still qualify. And I did. Okay. My social security income and my business income got me into this place. Okay, you must have some type of income to live in, you know, income-based housing, Section 8. So I was able to get this place. I've been living here for a year and about five months now. I, I moved in here last January of 2023. And um, it's a blessing because there's a lot of homeless people out here that are looking for housing. They can't get it because they're messed up, they're on drugs, you know, they're out of their mind. You know, some people, some women with kids are homeless. Even some men that have kids are homeless as well. You know, you got these people that are, you know, with a lot of kids staying with somebody 
and knowing that they really don't want to stay with that person, but you know, it's hard. It's really hard out here. And like I say, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about this. Yeah, I see all these migrants that came over here. Okay, they're getting Section 8 housing. If you go to, if you look at the news, you watch the news, and they always show the migrants outside of these hotels. You know, the migrants, you know, you go to the Section 8 office, you see them all in there. You see them all in there, and they're getting our benefits. Okay, they're getting U.S. benefits, and they're not even a citizen. So you guys say stuff about that, but then when it's a black person, especially when you're black, when you're black and you're living in income-based housing, it's always a problem. But, you know, you get the people on here, the trolls, they'll try to say something about, oh, typical Democrat. Um, they'll comment below and say, you know, you're able body, you should be living in a market rate rent and all this other stuff, you know what I'm saying? And no, so... You know, living in low income housing, living in, you know, low income housing for me is like a stepping stone just to live here temporary. When I start making some real life changing money, I'm not going to be living in here no more. I'm going to do what I need to do to get out of it. I don't care if I'm disabled or not. You know, I have the skills to move out and enjoy my life and, you know, live in a place, live in a place that I really, really want to live in. And, you know, my goal is to continue to do what I'm doing. I don't care what none of y'all got to say. Okay, I don't give a damn what y'all got to say, but um, yeah, like that's my goal. My goal is to live a better life and uh, I'm going to continue doing what I need to do for myself. And once I get to that point where I start, like I said, making all this real money, then I could give this up and let the next person move in here that's struggling, that need housing after a while. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the, the drawbacks of living in low income housing or income base is that there's always an inspection. There's always an inspection where they want to, you know, look at your apartment, make sure it's clean, you know, make sure the things are working. They want to make sure the apartment is basically not damaged. So they come in like all the time and they look at your place. Um, another, another drawback to it is that they're always in your business. <laughs> okay. Every time you get some type of income, you have to report it. You know what I'm saying? If you don't report it, you can either get kicked off. But for me, I live in low income housing, so they could kick you off the program and they feel like if you're hiding information, yeah, they can basically kick you out and then you'll lose your benefits and things like that. So I never lie about my income, even my business expenses. Like they look at that to, to, to determine, you know, how much your rent, how much your rent will be. So if you're getting income through your business, you know, expenses, they see that you pay expenses. So the rent might not be that high. So for me, I get social security and then I have business income as well as expenses. So they look at that. They look at that as well to determine how much you will pay with your rent. Oh, there's a lot of single people out here that are disabled. They got like you know physical and physical and mental health issues, and they need a place to stay. I used to work in mental health all the time, and people would need resources like that, and they will get it quick. They'll get it quick because they have like medical issues and stuff. So they'll get it quick. Sometimes I don't know how it is now in 2024. But when I was working back in mental health, I was providing a lot of resources and things like that <clears throat> for people to, you know, get, you know, low income housing, section eight and all that. But, um, yeah. So as far as like the, the benefits of being on it, you're able to save money. If you get like a job extra, if you get like an extra income, you're able to save money. And just because your income is low, it can be increased once you get employment. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you can't be... So thinking that your rent is always going to be pretty much low, low, low. If you get a job, your rent is going to go up. Okay. If I if I get a job, like I'm about to start working now, my rent is going to go up. You know what I'm saying? And then even though I have a business, they look at that as well. It's like this. Either I could be homeless or, you know, get a benefit that I get approved for and take advantage of it to my best ability. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people, they may get on a system, get on section eight, get on low income and not want to do better for themselves, not wanting to, you know, make money, you know what I'm saying? While they're living in these type of places, you know what I'm saying? 
So y'all already see with my low income apartment looks like I'm not about to show you every detail of my apartment. But there's a lot of veterans out here that are living in these that are living in low income housing. You know, it's not just a single woman with a bunch of kids that are living in low income housing. There's men with kids that are living in low income housing. And um, it's always that stereotype with, you know, the single, the single black woman, especially the single black woman with children saying that they're lazy. They can't afford to do all this stuff. You got to think about it. these women got kids, you know, they got kids and they just need help for a while. They just need help for a while to get it, to get by. And, um, I know a lot of people that used to be on section eight and they am, they end up getting off of it, getting really good jobs and starting businesses and making a lot of money. So they gave up the voucher. You know, this is not permanent. You know, the government could just say, oh, we're not doing Section 8 low-income housing anymore and um, you have to move, okay? So you have to be prepared, you know, living in this type of housing situation because it might not be forever, you know what I'm saying? It may not be forever. And some people live on this stuff forever and years and years and years. And that's not my goal, okay? My goal is not to do that, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I have skills to make money. You know, like I said, I just got a job and I'm gonna do everything that I can to save money, pay off my debt, pay off my car, pay off my credit cards, and then I'm out. <laughs> then I'm out of here, you know what I'm saying? I could get what I really wanna get once I get out of debt. You shouldn't really come for people and, you know, disrespect people in these comment sections about, Oh, you're a typical Democrat. Oh, you're just wanting to live off the government. Oh, this and all oh, that. Yeah, like that's not right. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know their situation. And I feel like if the benefits are available and somebody qualifies for them, why not get it? Why not get it if, it, if they qualify for it? And it's a lot of people on here. They know they get this low income stuff, income based, you know, government benefits. And they're, you know, a lot of these people are just haters. You know what I'm saying? They're haters. They're miserable behind camera. And they see that you're talking about stuff like this and they just got something negative to say. And they'll just say anything just to like distract you from, you know, making these videos. And thanks for listening to my story. I'm just telling the truth and I'm going to continue to be real about, you know, low income housing. Anybody could qualify for it if they if their income is low, not just disabled people, not just, you know, women with kids. But if you have a low income and you're single, you qualify for this type of, you know, benefit. You qualify for it. And um, if you qualify for it and you don't have nowhere to live, why not move into it? Why not move into it and do what you need to do to get out of it? Okay. With that being said, thanks for listening to me. Comment below and I'm out. Peace.